want to show you how my first attempt to make the Vietnamese pho went. Traditionally, you make the broth on chicken or beef, but beef was considered to be more luxury in uh, Vietnam. Um, the broth must cook for at least 8 to 10 hours, so it's very important that you have plenty of time before you begin such a dish. So the first thing I do is pour water into a pot and put the bones in. Then I add salt and vinegar and boil it for 10 to 15 minutes, um, which simply to remove all the blood and impurity from the bones. Then I pour out the water and clean the bones thoroughly under cold water. It doesn't matter that you pour out all the water because the taste from the bones will still be enhanced when you cook it for so long. Then I put new water into a pot and add the bones back in. It's really a good idea to make this um, process for any type of meat that you intend to use because it prevents the broth from becoming dark, dark and cloudy. Uh, as you will see later, I forgot to clean the piece of beef that I put in the broth, which made my broth darker than it actually should be. Then I take onions, garlic and ginger and half it in the middle and put them on a pan to get them caramelized a little bit. However, it's important to remove the browned or burned parts um, as they will also color the broth to make them more cloudy. This I had to take note of myself for the next time. Then I take the spices, so star anise, cinnamon stick, a whole cardamom seed and black peppercorns. And I really also should use um, fennel seeds but unfortunately I couldn't find them, so uh, that's another point I'll need to improve on for the next time. All the spices, I shake them on a pan to enhance the taste before I put them in the broth. They shouldn't become burnt, um, I just roast them until they start smelling a little bit smoky, as it's um, very important that they do not burn. Then I add onions, garlic and ginger into a nice little metal basket that I found on an Asian market and put it into the pot. So in that way I don't have to fill as many pots out after it's been cooking for so many hours. Uh, I make sure that it's completely covered with water and the spices, I'll put them in the broth later in the last hour so they, they get a clearer and more um, a more distinct taste. Then I make sure to filter out all the impurities that floats up to the surface of the broth so that broth remains clean and clear. The broth will be reduced as it boils, as it cooks, but make sure to fill in new boiling water in the pot so the amount remains the same. I cut the beef into two. One part I'll put in the broth and let cook for as long as the rest of the broth. And the other part I'll put in the freezer uh, 15 minutes before I need to serve, I want to use it before serving. And then I cut it into, into ultra thin slices. Um, and as mentioned before, I forgot to clean the, the meat for blood and impurities. I just put it directly into the broth. Um, I'll, I'll try next time, I'll, I won't forget it next time, so I hope my broth will be a little bit lighter and clear. I continue to pour boiling water into the broth to ensure that the amount of, of uh, liquid remains the same um, and I also clean for impurities and, and fat and uh, everything that comes to the surface continually. It's also important that the broth do not boil, does not boil um, but simply simmer. If it starts to boil, the impurities bind will be binded into the broth and it will also darken the color. So just uh, make sure that the broth uh, boils from the beginning and then reduce the heat to medium to low so that it only simmers. Now the broth has been boiling for or simmering for about 10 hours. So now I add salt, sugar and fish sauce. Traditionally, you wanted to use uh, rock sugar, but I only had the regular sugar, so that's what I had to use right now. Again, another op opportunity to, to improve uh, the taste perhaps for next, next time. I tasted, I can say that I may have to add a little bit extra of it all. 
then I let it uh, boil just for another 10 minutes or so um, and then I uh, pick up my little basket, the meat and the bones and then the broth needs to be filtered so everything becomes as clear uh, and clean as possible. Then I cook the rice noodles, uh, follow the instructions on the packaging and package and cut uh, out the meat in slices. It's so tender that it almost uh, crumbles when I cut it. Then I cut out the spring onions. Traditionally we cut the whites off and serve it in whole or half pieces and chop the green parts into small finer pieces. Then I cut um, then I cut uh, lime into half into slices and half the slices. And then I cut the small red onions into thin slices as well. Finally, I serve Thai, thai bas basil and cilantro, as well as bean sprouts, sriracha, which is a chili sauce and hoisin sauce that I can that you can use if you want to add a little bit more sweetness into the broth. Um, the raw meat I've taken out of the freezer was been lying for about 15 minutes and now I cut it into thin slices. It just helps to put it in the meat in the freezer 15 minutes shortly before so it's easier to cut out thinly. And you cut it into thin slices so that it boils when you pure the hot broth over it. So don't worry about that part. Then I arrange the dish after my best convictions. Uh, first the noodles and then the rest where it just fits and looks good. And then I, there, then I pour, pour over the hot broth over the meat to cook it. First I taste the broth. It tastes delicious and you can taste the fat and beefy flavor, the vegetables and the spices. Maybe I could have used a little bit more ginger as it's almost impossible to taste it. And then I tried to add some lime to give it a fresh lemony flavor and it tastes again and it's lovely. If you miss a little bit of spicy taste, you can add the shiraka. So I tried to do that, it's really great. And finally, you can give it a little bit of sweetness with the hoisin sauce and it also tastes really, really good. So I forgot to use all the seasoned herbs now, all the herbs, so of course I'll put them in as well. And all in all, it's a very tasty dish with many different flavors. A nice dish that I'll definitely do again, as all in all, it's not so easy to get it perfect the first time, but next time I know how to make it even better. So even though it took quite a while uh, to cook it, plus the extra time for the grocery shopping, I'm actually looking forward to making this dish even better next time. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see even more dishes. And thank you so much.